Hey everybody, Mark Fox here with Amazing Prophecies YouTube channel and Forever Free Ministries coming to you from Dallas, Texas tonight. I will warn you that this is a provocative and explosive inside edition of some end time developments that should cause you to sit up and take notice. Can a national emergency drastically cause some of your religious freedom to be snatched away overnight? Are we closer to the mark of the beast than many realize? We are seeing a convergence of end time prophetic events like never before. I believe everything is connected, everything is coming together, and this is a video like you've never seen before. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody, so I have some special handouts that I wanna put in your hands. I have a chart of symbols that are found in the books of Daniel Revelation and what they represent. I have a handout of the names of Jesus in the book of Revelation, and I have another handout, and I wanna show that to you right now, of 50 things to do on the Sabbath. I want to get all of these into your hands for free. Text me right now text Bible to the short number instead of a long phone number text Bible to 74121 just like you see it on the screen then you'll get a little form and you can fill that out you can give us prayer requests check for a free online Bible study course get a link to a Bible prophecy church near, near you and text alerts and more and if you are from outside the United States, you can email us, and Caleb will put that on the screen momentarily, and you can also phone call us, uh, and uh, so the number will be on the screen. So remember, if you're texting, text the word Bible to 74121, and we also have a graphic about Facebook. We have a group called Memorizing God's Word Together, Memorizing God's Word Together, and then we may be coming to a big city near you. If you want us to come to your city, we're offering a free dinner to up to four in your group. And we're going to be going from coast to coast, uh, from Chicago, Boston, Portland, Oregon, Charlotte, North Carolina. Lord willing, we may be coming to a city near you. Let us know if you plan to come and how far you would drive or what city you would drive to. Okay, so you can just let us know that. All right. I do believe that there's going to be a national emergency that will lead to the mark of the beast. Now, this terminology of a national emergency uh, makes us and reminds us of the wall that President Trump is, uh, is proposing. Now, you may be for it, you may be against it. That's a political hot potato, that's not my focus, but I'm simply saying that I believe in desperation a national emergency will lead to the mark of the beast. So, state of emergency, desperate nations do desperate things. Look at your history books. The mark of the beast is coming. Something biblical is happening to America and the world that will lead to the dreadful mark of the beast. The mark of the beast will look like a solution to the chaos and desperation in America and the world. So what if the mark of the beast is not what you think it is? What if it's not facial recognition or national ID card? What if it's not an implantable chip? And I have a number of videos on this topic. So I think about Donald Trump declares Sunday a national day of prayer. Why? Because there was an emergency. There was a, a disaster that hit Houston called Hurricane Harvey. And so a natural disaster led President Trump to declare a national day of prayer. And of course, I say a hearty amen that we need to pray for people impacted by natural disasters, but follow me. Could a quick succession of apocalyptic national or rather natural disasters lead the United States to declare a national mark of the beast because there's an emergency? Look at all the natural disasters. So 
President Trump's visit to the Vatican to see Pope Francis was highlighted by the Pope, see what he has in his hands? The president, a copy of his climate change agenda called Laudato Si in care of our common home. In 2017, Pope Francis seized the moment to give President Trump his climate change agenda, Laudato Si. A matter of fact, he says, in the face of the emergencies of human-induced climate change, social exclusion, and extreme poverty, we join together to declare that human-induced climate change is a scientific reality and its decisive mitigation is a moral and religious imperative for humanity. Now, most do not know what is a centerpiece of Laudato Si. I believe, translating his words basically, I believe he would be in favor of a global Sunday law. So, listen, as I read a portion of Laudato Si about the Sabbath and how he is believing and teaching that we should keep Sunday. It, that would help us to take care of our common home, the earth, the environment. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath. Notice he calls the Sabbath a Jewish Sabbath. Now the Bible makes it clear that the Sabbath is for all mankind. That's what Jesus said in Mark 2, 27, 28. So Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, the first day of the new creation. Now, this is interesting. So the Roman Catholic Church changed the day to honor from Saturday Sabbath to Sunday, and now our uh, common day for care of our common home. So I read this. So Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day for healing and healing of the environment as well because the law, listen to what it says here, it Sunday also prevents that unfettered greed and sense of isolation which make us seek personal gain to the detriment of all else. The law of weekly rest forbade work on the seventh day. Rest opens our eyes to the larger picture and gives us a renewed sensitivity to the rights of others. Do you hear that? So in other words, honoring the Sabbath, which they believe would be Sunday, would help to respect people's rights to have the day off. And so the day of rest centered on the Eucharist sheds its light on the whole week and motivates us to greater concern for nature and the poor. So what is he saying? He's saying if we keep Sunday, it will motivate us to take care of the environment, of, of the earth, as Mother Earth, as they would call it. You know, here's what he said. Maybe it's time to ask ourselves if working on Sundays is true freedom. In other words, the position of the Catholic Church is that we need to have legislation to, to stop businesses from being open on Sunday. In other words, there should be a global Sunday law. And they would call this religious freedom. So um, they would call it in favor of workers' rights. So the Roman Catholic Church frankly admits changing the biblical Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, to Sunday, the first day of the week. Listen to what it says in the Converts Catechism. Which is the Sabbath day? Saturday is the Sabbath day. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. So almost the whole Christian world reverences Sunday. Did God know that this attempt to change his holy Sabbath would occur? Oh yeah. Daniel 7.25, speaking about the dark deeds of the Roman papal power, he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. Well, what are the laws of the Most High called? The Ten Commandments. Which one has to do with times? 
only the seventh day Sabbath. So the Bible makes it very clear that the Roman papal power would claim the authority to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. The Bible predicted it, history reveals it, and the church admits it. The church, on the other hand, after changing the day of rest from the Jewish Sabbath or seventh day of the week to the first, made the third commandment refer to Sunday as the day to be kept holy as the Lord's Day, the Catholic Encyclopedia. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act. The act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. Notice that the position of the Catholic Church is that Sunday observance is a mark, an identifying mark of her claimed power. <clears throat> so I want you to notice as we continue. The Catholic Church designated Sunday as a day for corporate worship and gets full credit or blame for the change. All right, we keep going. So Pope Francis is here promoting a false Sabbath, a counterfeit Sabbath. That's what he's doing. But God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So, movie theaters around the country have been showing the documentary Pope Francis, a man of his word, which provides a unique perspective on the Pope's views about our world, scripture, and the Sabbath. While referring to the world as Mother Earth, he calls on Christians to take responsibility for improving how we treat the world. All right? 60 Minutes on CBS News promoted Pope Francis' movie, Pope Francis, a man of his word, ahead of its release in 2018. Today, really, we live with the accelerator. This is what he said. This is what he said in the movie. Today, really, we live with the accelerator down from morning till night. This ruins mental health, spiritual health, and physical health. More so, it affects and destroys family and therefore society. On the seventh day, he rested. What the Jews followed and still observe was to consider the Sabbath as holy. On Saturday, you rest. One day of the week, that's the least. Out of gratitude to worship God, to spend time with the family, to play, to do all these things, we are not machines. Well, I agree with the Pope that we are not machines, and I agree with him that the Sabbath is on the seventh day. But when he says, oh, one day of the week, that's the least, no, 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 no. Sunday is not the day to, kept, to keep holy because only God can make a day holy. And he said in his Ten Commandments that the seventh day is the day to be kept holy. The Pope's end time popularity is clearly and pointedly predicted in Bible prophecy. In Revelation 13, the Bible gives the chilling prediction that a sinister power will arise that most of planet Earth will be so profoundly influenced by it and wonder after it. The Protestant reformers like Martin Luther pointed unerringly to the Roman papal power as the antichrist of biblical prophecy. Were they right? Oh yeah. Because in Revelation 13, we discover at least 10 characteristics of this infamous beast power. Number one, it reveals that this power rises out of pagan Rome. Number two, which speak great things and blasphemous things like claiming to forgive sins and pray to Mother Mary and pray to the saints and confession to a priest. These are blasphemous things that the Roman papal power is guilty of. 
number three, would become a great persecuting power during the long bloody dark ages. The Roman papal power is guilty of killing 50 million people down through the bloody dark ages. Number four, would wield a dominant global influence, especially in the last days. All the world wondered after the beast, says the book of Revelation. A simple glance <coughs> at world history <clears throat> exposes this antichrist corrupt power as being none other than the Roman papacy. Let no one deceive you by any means, Paul said, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Is he God? No. But is he acting as God when he claims to forgive sin and and claims homage and claims that it's okay to have people bowing down to uh, shrines of Mary and so forth and confessing sins to a earthly priest and claiming the right to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday? Well, in these last days, Bible prophecy is rapidly fulfilling right before our eyes. The papacy has reemerged on the world stage and is now influencing millions and leading them down the dark path that I believe the Bible teaches inevitably lead to the dreadful mark of the beast. Well, what? who is the beast? The Roman papal power. Well, what do they claim as the mark of their authority? Sunday observance. Now, we can go to church seven days a week, but the time will come when Sunday will be enforced. And if we choose at that time to say, no, I'm not going to keep the seventh day Sabbath. I'm going to go along with this Sunday law and I'm going to honor Sunday. When that is enforced, you are choosing to follow the beast and ultimately get this mark of the beast when it's enforced. And it's coming, friends. It's coming. The Bible predicted it, and you must not only expect it, but be prepared for it by studying your Bible more than ever. But most people in this world aren't aware of the fact that Sunday observance is an institution of the Roman Catholic Church and is nowhere commanded in the Bible. The Roman Catholic Church stated many years ago that the keeping of Sunday by the vast majority of Christians is a sign of the papacy's authority. I repeat this quote. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act, that is from Saturday to Sunday, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. So look here, everybody. If the beast, if the beast is the Roman papal system, the Antichrist power, like the Protestant reformers believed, and we know that we must identify the mark of the beast. Well, what's the mark, the claimed mark of authority of the Roman papal power? It's the fact that they change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. They say that's a sign of our power. And God says, no, a sign of his power is the seventh day Sabbath. Let's keep going, everybody. Let's keep going. So ready or not, here comes Sunday laws. This is Pope John Paul II in his encyclical called Dies Domini 1998. Dies Domini means the Lord's Day. They are referring to Sunday, but the Bible calls the seventh day Sabbath the Lord's Day. He says, in this matter, my predecessor, Pope Leo XIII, in his encyclical Rerum, spoke of Sunday rest as a worker's right, which the state must guarantee. Well, if the state guarantees Sunday rest, what do you call that? Sunday laws or Sunday blue laws. And so I want you to notice that in 1961, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled eight to one that the Sunday blue laws that really are dormant right now, but they're gonna have a, a real comeback, Blue laws don't violate First Amendment or separation of church and state. And you say, well, you know, they'll, they'll protect us. Did you know that the majority of justices are Roman Catholic? Now, I repeat, I believe that God has people in all churches 
And I further believe that many Catholics will be in heaven, many Protestants in heaven. I'm not the judge, but many will not be in heaven. God is the judge. But I'm simply saying it's dangerous to not follow God's word and God's Ten Commandments. And so natural disasters will lead to desperation and national emergency and the mark of the beast. Desperation, emergency will result because of a rash of natural disasters following in quick succession. Believe me, this country will fall to her knees and um, yet there'll be a false revival. It tells us that in Revelation 13. And so, yes, what about the deadly tornadoes? Well, how climate change is affecting tornadoes. Pacific Standard. Um, what about hurricanes? Hurricanes are becoming more ferocious. And yet, New York Post says, no, global warming isn't causing worse hurricanes. So this is a debatable topic. I recognize that, of course. But fire NATOs, have you ever heard of fire NATOs? Um, we'll get into that in a moment. But first, more about the intensity of storms, about uh, hurricanes. Average number of high intensity storms is increasing over the last two decades. Okay. Uh, Hurricane Harvey, 125 billion, 68 deaths. Don't have time to get into all of that. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Fire NATOs. How about Paradise Gone in California? And we've seen horrific fires uh, just uh, uh, scorching California. And I believe that these are judgments of God falling upon our land because of the impenitence of mankind. And so the good and the bad suffer together, unfortunately, when the judgments of God are falling upon the land. And God's judgment is when he pulls aside his protective hand and then the enemy unleashes his fury. And so the Paradise Fire is catastrophic and the wildfire threat to California is only growing. And of course, there's man-made pollution, choking pollution. The planet is literally heating up, rising temperatures, smash, smashing records in America. Alaska hit 70 degrees, the earliest ever, and more record highs are expected. That's in March 29, 2019. Record-breaking heat waves, catastrophic famines, lakes disappearing. Uh, searing heat, killing the vulnerable. The book of Revelation predicts a time during the seven last plagues, during the tribulation, and I have videos about the tribulation, predicts the sun will scorch many to death. Read it in Revelation chapter 16. Sea levels are rising. I believe Jesus predicted this in Luke 21, 24 and 25, and I deal with this in videos. Something biblical is happening to America and the world. Catastrophic flooding climate change and the death of the small farm. The catastrophic flooding in the Midwest is forcing more farmers to consider a stark choice, quit or consolidate. At least one million acres of U.S. farmland have been devastated by floods. And so this is tragic, everybody. And so an agricultural disaster without equal in modern American history. And so catastrophic Midwestern flooding costing farmers one billion and counting. Midwest flooding could be costly in Nebraska. Tab is 1.3 billion and rising with waters. Tragedy of biblical proportions, switching gears here now, happened in Mo uh, Mozambique and uh, Zimbabwe. And the deadliest storm ever to hit this area in Africa. Africa, African floods wiped out entire villages after cyclones, says Jesuit. More than two million people in Mozambique, in Zimbabwe, in Malawi have been affected by a cyclone that has killed more than 700 people with hundreds still missing in Mozambique and Zimbabwe at the time uh, that this uh, article came out. And so the movement to do something about climate change is a result of desperation, a perceived global emergency. And then I think about the epic, uh, epic history was made in Paris in 2015. 
196 countries signed climate change agreement at the Paris summit. Well, guess what? Pope Francis published his encyclical called Laudato Si that has about Sunday Sabbath in it, promoting a Sunday laws, I believe, called Laudato Si. It, it, you, you can't miss this. Pope Francis published an encyclical called Laudato Si intended, what was his motivation? In part to influence the conference. So the encyclical calls for action against climate change. And by the way, I do believe we should combat climate change to some extent, of course. We need to do what we can do. Humanity is called to recognize the need for changes of lifestyle. And of course, they would believe, the Pope would believe, that includes having Sunday rest. So changes of lifestyle production and consumption in order to combat this warming, or at least the human causes which produce or aggravate it. And of course, that is d hotly debated, <laughs> no pun intended, but Paris Summit, Pope's climate agenda promotes Sunday Sabbath. So Pope is always urgent about this. Pope Francis on Paris Climate Change Summit, it's either now or never. From The Guardian, Pope Francis says destroying the environment is a sin. And 71% uh, of Americans understand that the climate is changing and a majority know that humans are driving it. 72% of Americans consider climate change to be a moderate, serious, or imminent threat. So the second most talked about politician in Washington, D.C. is AOC. And she's stoking the fires of protests against climate change. AOC, we're talking about the second most talked about politician in Washington. She is Democrats' most controversial, outspoken freshman, a firebrand, if you will. And what is o, uh, AOC known for? The Green Deal and much more. We're talking about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and she became America's lightning rod and the Green New Deal and much thinking in the Democratic Party, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, said last November, people are going to die if we don't start addressing climate change ASAP. It's not enough to think it's important. We must make it urgent. Change is closer than we think inside Alexandria ocasio Cortez's unlikely rise. Now, this is very interesting. Speaking at a televised town hall on Monday, Representative-elect uh, AOC, uh, Democrat of New York, said the government's next steps toward fighting climate change need to be as momentous as the civil rights movement or NASA's push to put a man on the moon. This is going to be the great society, the moonshot this civil rights movement of our generation. This is the scale of the ambition that this movement is going to require, the New York Democrat said. So what's very interesting, she tweeted this, and this got some attention and some uh, backlash from some. She said, Genesis 1, God looked on the world and called it good, not once, not twice, but seven times. Genesis 2, God commands all people to serve and protect creation. Leviticus, God command, uh, uh, mandates that not only the people, but the land that sustains them shall be respected. And she says, you shouldn't need a Bible to tell you to protect our planet, but it does anyway. And hashtag to relevant magazine for source excerpts that I adapted for the previous tweet, she said. Now that's interesting. So here she is in the limelight, and the second most talked about politician in Washington, and she's drawing attention to the Bible, Genesis. And it's true. God didn't tell us to trash the earth. He made us stewards. So she's, she's right that we need to uh, take care of our environment. We shouldn't trash our environment, right? We got to live here, right? So that makes sense. Now it's debatable about, okay, how much does uh, human consumption and productivity uh, relate to the environment and so forth? That's a hotly debated topic. But my point is this, she is drawing in this big debate about climate change 
they're drawing attention to the Bible. Is it a good thing that our focus goes to the Bible? Well, that's a good thing. But did you know that Genesis 2 talks about the seventh day Sabbath? And did you know the Relevant magazine had an article called Taking a Modern Day Sabbath? The importance of setting aside time to slow down and unplug. And she was um, drawing attention to this magazine. And um, how are the youth getting involved in the movement against climate change? It's our time to rise up. Youth climate strikes held in 100 countries. School and university students continue Friday protests to call for political action on crisis. From Australia to America, children put down their books on Friday to march for change for the first global climate strike. Are the youth ushering in a new ecological revolution? Is this just the beginning of a new movement of youth? For many years now, Al Gore has been the most powerful voice against climate change. He, the Nobel Peace Prize winner and former US Vice President Al Gore is one of the world's most vocal defenders of the environment. And you know what he says, according to Vatican News, Al Gore, Pope Francis, a moral force for solving climate crisis. As a matter of fact, um, Al Gore says his 2007 documentary film, An Inconvenient Truth, won an Oscar and his climate reality project recently hosted an important summit in Berlin. In this exclusive interview with Vatican News, Al Gore praises Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si and calls for a sustainability revolution. And of course, the Pope would say, you want sustainability revolution? Then have Sunday laws. And so the most popular moral spokesman advocate voice to combat climate change by keeping Sunday rest as part of the mix is none other than Pope Francis. And he has his agenda. Many are listening to Pope's constant warning messages regarding climate change. Pope warns climate change turning Earth into desert garbage. We can no longer remain silent before one of the greatest environmental crises in world history. Vatican Environment Summit challenges Trump on climate change. Expect more environment summits initiated by the Vatican and more focus on Sunday laws. And so Pacific Standard growing concern over climate change is creating interfaith dialogue. Two years after Pope Francis is uh, launched uh, Laudato Si, the Vatican's plea to save the earth, Trump rejected its uh, tenets and the Paris Agreement, but people of all faiths are unified globally to beat climate change. Could it be the world is gonna come together in a Sunday law as part of this mix? I agree that we need to take care of the environment. I'm simply saying that the Pope has put in there something that's very dangerous, and that is, I believe it's dangerous if this could lead to Sunday laws. We'll have to wait and see. So Pope urges oil energy bosses to lead on environment. So the Pope is influencing the oil tech, drawing his attention to his encyclical Laudato Si that includes Sunday rest. In 2015, the Pope was influencing mayors of big cities. And in 2015, the first time a Pope ever spoke before US Congress, he promoted his climate change agenda. Earth Day is coming, and so is more spotlight in Pope Francis and his climate change agenda, which includes urgent promotion of a work-free Sunday. 194 countries will celebrate it. We're talking about the United Nations, uh, obviously, uh, authorizing it, promoting it. What is Earth Day? April 22nd. Earth Day has become one of the most widely celebrated environmental events across the globe. On this day, events are held worldwide to increase awareness and appreciation of Earth's natural environment. Currently, it is celebrated in more than 192 countries each year. It was originally celebrated at spring equinox around 21 March every day, but now the United Nations has designated 22 April as the International Mother Day. 
All right. So April 22nd is coming. Earth Day, Pope Francis calls all to see the world through the eyes of God, the creator. Notice April 22, 2015. Here's um, 20, April 24, two days after Earth Day, 2016. Pope Francis on Earth Day transformed deserts into forests. Matter of fact, um, uh, after a couple months, several months after Earth Day in 2015, Pope creates Catholic Earth Day, CNN reported. Well, the, the Pope uh, declared September 1 of every year to be the World Day of Prayer for the care of creation. Very interesting. I believe he'll probably use September 1 to promote his Laudato Si that includes um, I believe promotion ultimately of a Sunday law. All around the world, there will be celebrations and activities on Earth Day. And I think a lot of this is a good thing to do. List of Earth Day celebrations there in Denver. Now here's something I don't recommend, but this is interesting. Woodstock, 1969, New York. What's very interesting, they're gonna have a lot of big rock stars by the way, I'm not going. We're big rock stars like Roger Plant, uh, 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 Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin and uh, Jay-Z and all sorts of big, big stars, Santana. And uh, I can't think of all offhand, uh, Siley Myris, uh, uh, Miley Cyrus, pardon me, and many, many others. And they're gonna, they're gonna meet 50 years later uh, from 1969 to 2019, 50 years later, Woodstock Music and Arts Fair 2019 presents Woodstock 50. And guess what? It just so happens tickets will go on sale um, on Earth Day. How about that? They go on sale on Earth Day. And by the way, what's interesting, what's also interesting is AOC is going to have a special uh, race, foot race. They're going to have a special foot race for those who want to support her there in New York. And it's going to happen the first Saturday after Earth Day. She strategically planned it that way. Okay, so everything is leading up to the Mark of the Beast, a national Sunday law. A work-free Sunday with the exception of necessary services says that our priority is not economics, but the human being, gratuity, not co non-commercial relations, rather family and friends. For believers, it means a relationship with God and with a community. Perhaps it is time to ask whether it is true freedom to work on Sundays. Doesn't that sound nice? But it's going to lead to a Sunday law. In 2012, Pope Benedict said that in defending Sunday as a day of rest, one defends human freedom. He noted how time for the family is threatened by a sort of dictatorship or work commitments. Sunday is the day of the Lord and of men and women, a day in which everyone must be able to be free, free for the family and free for God. In defending Sunday, we defend human freedom. But you know what? It's not human freedom when you um, enforce a Sunday law. So religious freedom includes work-free Sundays, national global Sunday laws coming. And um, in recent comments, listen, EU bishops back pillar of social rights call for recognition of Sunday rest. In recent comments on the draft document, commies called for recognition of Sunday rest. As in times of digitalization of the economy, the boundaries between private and work life become increasingly blurred. Commies proposes to incorporate decent working hours and the right to a common weekly day of rest, the Bishop's Commission stated. This day should be in principle the Sunday, which is recognized by tradition and custom in most of the member states or regions. Are you listening? And so you say, well, we have the Supreme Court to protect us. Not so fast. They said that blue laws do not violate the U.S. Constitution. And so could natural disasters, I repeat, gone full circle here, could natural disasters lead President Trump or a subsequent president to declare more national days of prayer? And could it eventually be national 
Sunday law to be enforced in light of all sorts of natural and man-made disasters? Could a quick succession of apocalyptic natural disasters lead the United States to lead the way, and I have a video about this, the first nation to enforce the mark of the beast, watch that video, declare a national Sunday law? And Jesus said, Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Now, after the Sabbath is the first day of the week, began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the sea of the tomb. Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue, the church on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So friends, look here. Look here, everybody. I'm here to tell you that Jesus wants you to keep the seventh-day Sabbath. The day is going to come when there will be a national Sunday law. But friends, we need to follow the Word of God. We need to follow the Word of God. If you would like, if you would like to take a stand for Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, I, I might be a little confused, Jesus. I don't understand all this that Mark Fox has been sharing with us from the Bible and current events. But Jesus, I'm open to study this. I'm open to learn this. I'm willing to follow the truth. Then I invite you right now to type. Go ahead and type in the comment section below. Type in your response to what you've just heard. Are you willing to say this? Jesus, I'm willing to follow whatever your Bible says. If it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. So I invite you, I invite you as we close, make a decision. Go ahead and type below, Jesus, I will follow your truth. Jesus, go ahead and write it. Jesus, I will follow your truth. And my son is gonna go ahead and put on the screen our uh, text number. You can text Bible to 74121. Text Bible to 74121. You get a little form there and you can fill that out and we can give you, we can give you the links to these various handouts. Also, if you're in other parts of the world besides the United States, the email will be there on the screen. Or if you want to call us, if you don't text, you can call us and my son will put that on the screen at this time. And so this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember Jesus Christ died for you. He rose again and he's coming very, very soon. Get ready, get ready, get ready.